waters back on. Don't make a mad dash, okay, or anything. So thank you for being here at Pad Point Fellowship Church. Wasn't the praise and worship just excellent today? Amen. <clears throat> Before we are anything here at Path Point, we're first worshipers. There's nothing in our existence that motivates us out of structure, out of uh, being politically or religiously correct. This is, and this ministry in church has been built on just being true worshipers of God. Amen. Just abandoning ourselves, forgetting who's beside us or behind us or in front of us and what other people might think about us and just abandoning ourselves to worshiping Him. That's where every one of these messages that are taught from this platform come from. They come from a heart that has felt the presence of God. You see, here in the church, the church in general, we have to get to the point where it's not about what is heard. It's not about what is spoken. It's about what is felt. I think we can all agree we've heard a lot about God. But I think we can all agree we've felt little of His presence. Amen? And I came today with His presence. I don't need you to help me to get into His presence. I'm already there. Amen? And you're going to feel Him today. Let me ask you how you feel about God right now. What would happen if Justin Bieber walked in that door? How would you feel? Awestruck. Huh? Okay, for some of you, if, if George Strait walked in the door. Texans, what can I say? You would be, oh. That's George. Did you hear George Strait is here? Did you hear Justin Bieber's? You have an emotional connection to them, and you don't even know them. That kind of emotion, that kind of affection should be developed in our relationship with God. <laughs> he came in the room. And he moves me. See, that's not fake. That's authentic. And it's time for the body of Christ, the church, to be authentic. Amen. Once again. Amen. Quit trying to do things to get people. And do things to get God. I want God. I want Jesus. I want the Holy Spirit in my life more than anything else. If you happen to believe that we live in the last days, this better be something that you get very comfortable about. I want to talk about some of these things in this series, Realm of Wonder. That word wonder, as you saw it earlier, the definition of it means uh, to reverse. The reverse of what might be expected. To wonder uh, by virtue of a spectacular result. An encounter that may be surprising. An event that causes one to marvel. An event or an encounter where something takes place... And, and, you, and we look at it and we go, it, we're, we're, that was awesome. I wasn't expecting that. I didn't know the outcome could possibly look like that or be that way. It, it happened differently than the way I thought, and it was much better than I ever anticipated. Amen. Wonder. Wonder. I was standing on this platform January 17th of this year 
And up out of my, out of my mouth, I heard myself say this. I was just as surprised as the people that were in the auditorium that day. I said, be prepared for an encounter with the realm of wonder. From that day to this, I've been meditating on that. Father, what does that mean? What are you saying? Remember, we were in a series at that time called The Breaker, where the, where the, the great prophet Micah was speaking and referring to Jesus as the breaker. It's the only, point, only time in Scripture that Jesus is referred to as the breaker, and yet... He's very much that in our life, isn't he? When we were born again and we came into a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, he broke us out of darkness and he broke us into light. And ever since that day, he's been breaking you out of one problem into another answer, out of one situation and circumstance into a brighter, greater tomorrow and future. Amen. And this is Jesus' assignment in our life. He is the breaker. Amen. It was during that time that we uh, reminded you of the prophecy of 2020. 2020, year plenty. Not one year, not two years, not three years, but many, many years pulled into one. The year's been said, it's all but done. So all that's left for you to do is connect your living faith and watch it happen to you. It's a year of plenteousness, of favor, <laughs> of resources, of blessings, miracles, and signs sent from heaven. You'll know that they're mine. So open your heart, expect to receive, set your thoughts upon me. It's time to believe. And as you can see, that's exactly what happened to Frankie and Janet Watts. And for those who have shared their testimony throughout this year, we've seen that 2020 was a year of plenty. And I asked that question, how many of you in 2020, uh, you experienced a year of plenty? About 80% of the people in this room raised their hands. And we've been listening to, like I said, one testimony after another. And, and what we've discovered is that word testimony in the Old Testament means do again. Amen. comes from the words do again. So every time we testify, we release the power that produced the previous miracle in that person's life. And now it's released to do that same miracle in someone else's life. Even though that miracle may look completely different. And we asked the question and we answered it. We said, how much of God's power is uh, bottled up upon this earth today inside people who just won't share their testimony. Yes. See, because we thought God's power was exhaustible. We thought it was like electricity. Once used, it's used up. God's power is infinite. Amen. God's power is inexhaustible. God's power is unlimited. God's power cannot be used up. It's waiting on the inside of that person who, who received that miracle power from God. And it's waiting to be released in someone else's life. Amen. It was during that time that we also gave you the prophecy of 2021. And, the, and, and it goes something like this. 2020 plus one, a new era has just begun. It's Jesus the breaker standing before us, moving the darkness. We are as one chorus. Amen. Beyond the narrow, our capacity enlarged. He encourages us forward as he leads in the charge. Jesus says, I've spoiled his plan. I've attacked his attack. Now's the time I'm going to give back. Yeah. Amen. So whatever has been stolen from you, years, time, resources, amen, finances, health, relationships. Amen. 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 Jesus says, the breaker says, I'm going to give it back to you. I'm going to give it back to you. I'm going to restore it back to you. And he said, it's a time and a season of multiplication because addition is too slow. I'm going to multiply it. I'm going to multiply it. It's going to come in, not in ones or twos, but not even threes or fours, but many, 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 Many. It's not going to rain just one day. It's going to rain three days in a row, four days in a row, five days in a row. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? We're going to see it in the firmament. We're going to see it in the heavens. We're going to see it in the weather patterns. We're going to see it in our personal lives. We're going to see it with his presence in our midst. We're going to see it upon other people. And we're going to see God exist and live and move among us in multiplication. Amen. Multiplied ways. Amen. He said it was a season of going forward. Be steady, he said. Move forward. Go forward into this plan. Amen. 
And you may ask the question, Scott, why? Why is this important? Because your life is a prophetic journey, whether you believe it or not. Let me say it again. Your life is a prophetic journey, whether you believe it or not. Now, I'm not encouraging you to go looking for a prophecy. That's the most dangerous thing you can do. You talk about going off the rails. Amen? I'm talking about getting rooted and planted in a church called a divine relationship community called Path Point Fellowship Church where God always gives us a prophecy going into the year. And you will find that your life fits within that, prof- that prophecy that he gives us. Did you get that? Divine relationship community. God has ordained you to be a part of this community. God has called you to this community. He's the, if, if our vision statement is to bring God and people together, then what do you think his vision statement is? It coincides with what our vision statement is. He wants to bring people and himself together. Amen? In a divine relationship community. Amen? God has called you to the providential relationships in this church. Don't go looking elsewhere. Look within it. Search and find. Seek and you will find. If you hunger and thirst for it, you'll be filled. Amen? Hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord praise right there. Now I want you to see something in Hebrews, the second chapter. Look at verse 4. Then God added his witness to theirs. So now we have two witnesses. He validated their ministry with signs, astonishing wonders, all kinds of powerful miracles, and by the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which he distributed as he desired. Now, this is how God validated Jesus' ministry with signs, wonders, miracles, healings, and prophecy. This is how God validated the apostles' ministry. That was thousands of years ago, and this is still how he validates ministries. And those that don't have this validation are not authentic. They're just going through the motions. Grab hold of this. It's not about what's said. And what you hear, it's about what you see and feel and sense. Amen? We have to make the shift where we're just word hogs. And the more eloquent the speech, and the more, the, the more proficient the English language, and the more flower we, fl- I can't even say it right, flowery. Is that even a word, I guess? I think I've heard that somewhere. Maybe it was from you. Yeah. Uh, and so, see, Flowery, I'll have her say it. Um, you know, the more impressed we are and drawn to that. No, it's the signs, wonders, and miracles that validates ministry. And if you've been here at Path Point very long, you have seen sign and wonder and miracle and healing and and you've heard it in the testimonies and you've heard and you've seen what God's done in finances and you've seen what God's done in so many areas of people's lives over the 21 years. Amen. 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 And the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Now we're going to see that throughout this series. One scripture after another. One recorded documented event after another where he validated and he says it, I validate ministry with signs, wonders, miracles. If it's not in that ministry, I didn't validate it. Wow. That'll stretch your religious thinking. Huh? It's time to break the box. The box that, is, that, we've, been, that, that, that we've allowed the spirit of religion to build. And say, no, this is the template. This is how it has to be built. And it's got to fit inside these four walls. No, we got to tear it down. Because signs, wonders, and miracles, they are messy. Mm -hmm. And so many people explain it away. Because they don't operate in it. And they're scared of it. Amen? But when I recognize this, no, God, (laughs) this is how he validates authenticity. 
an authentic relationship with him comes with his presence because only his presence can produce those signs, wonders, and miracles. Amen? In today's session, I want to talk about stop the slide. Uh, <laughs> I asked the question, um, what do we typically do whenever we're in a series of negative things happening to us or our family? What do we do? Well, we try to fix it. One of the ways we try to fix it is by go, uh, we, we go and a- ask questions. We may ask our spouse, why do you think? Or we may ask God, God, I don't understand why this is happening to me. I just don't understand how. Uh, in fact, let me just ask you this question, Lord. What did I do to open the door to the devil where he could come in and affect my life the way he is? Whatever language you use when you're talking to God, I've used it all, so you're not going to surprise me. Um, you may ask your doctor I don't understand how this is happening to me that you would give me this diagnosis. You may ask a pastor or tell the pastor, you know, could you shed some light on this? You may ask your lawyer, oh, why are they suing me? You may ask your accountant, I don't understand. I make this amount of money. and Why do I have so little in the bank? But typically when we are dealing with and facing a series of negative momentum, Negative things are happening to us. We try to fix it. Now, as believers, if we simply focus our time, our energy, and our efforts on the visible realm, that is, we're, you know, we're struggling, we're working, we're trying, we're battling, we're preparing, we're doing, <clears throat> we're doing all these things in the visible realm, while ignoring the invisible realm of the spirit. See, we're so busy, so busy in the visible realm trying to fix this that we ignore the invisible realm of the spirit. Then what happens is we literally, we literally find ourselves stopping the power of God that would minimize the intensity of the circumstance that we're in and stop the slide from continuing to go on. Now, the reason this is important, because there is no bell that goes off at the bottom. Ding, 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 you're at the bottom. I wish there were. That way I'd at least know, okay, the end is near, or I'm going to bounce off this and go the other direction. Amen? So, it's important that we recognize what we do and what we're doing in a negative slide, there are so many people, even God's people, they are in a nosedive in some area of their life, and their spirit is screaming out to them that you're fixing to hit the bottom. And even their soul, I believe, even though they act oblivious to it, their soul has caught on. No, don't keep going that direction, and they're in a nosedive, and sure enough. But here's the, here's the good news today. Here's the good news, Okay. God will never walk away from the scattered pieces of your life like people will do to you. He will never walk away. If you hit bottom and your life is scattered, listen to me. These, uh, these results, these things that happen in our life are not happenstance. There's a law called cause and effect. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, a curse does not come without a cause. You can consider the curse being a result of something wicked or something evil or something negative that's come against your life. Something that maybe, yes, you did introduce into your life or maybe something that got introduced into your life through your lineage, through your family, through your through your parents or your grandparents or your great-grandparents, and somewhere uh, it started this negative beginning. And now, because they didn't deal with it, you pick up on the slide that they've been in all their lives. Amen. We want to stop that. And signs, wonders, and miracles, healings, and prophecy have been given to us, God's people, by Him, in order to help us 
in that negative slide. See, you have to stop the slide before it stops you. So that's what we're talking about today. Stop the slide before it stops you. Stop that financial negative slide before it stops you. Stop that, that hate. Stop that offense. Stop that unforgiveness. Stop the list goes on and on. What is it for you? I'm just throwing a few things out like a wide net to kind of like get you to thinking what that is for you. That's not there coincidentally. We got to do something about it. Now let me let me say this to you before we move on. Without having an affection for signs, wonders, miracles, healings, and prophecy, we stop the anointing for signs, wonders, miracles, healings, prophecy. I'm talking about affection. I'm talking about it being emotionally engaged. With signs, wonders, and miracles. Because we know those things can only come from God. Amen? I'm not talking about mentally ascending to and just agreeing to signs, wonders, and miracles. I'm talking about making an emotional attachment to signs, wonders, miracles, and healings and prophecy. Amen? Now let's un- un- unravel it, unpack it as we go forward today, okay? I want us to look at two different sets of people. One is, a, one is just an individual. Another is a group of people. And I want us to look at them in their conflict, how God comes along and gives them a, process, a prophecy, and then notice how they respond. The first one we're going to look at is in Isaiah 54 chapter. You've been a Christian very long. You've heard this taught where you have a barren woman. This woman has been deserted by her husband. She is, uh, you know, back in those days, there were no fertility doctors, no fertility drugs. There were no fostering systems. There was no, you know, adoption agency. So that's not how you could get a kid. This woman, back in those days, when uh, you were unfruitful in your womb, you were disgraced and shamed publicly. And in her desperation, she cried out to God. I want a child. But it wasn't, just, it wasn't just something that she said one time. It was something that she got on her knees and with tears and with a heartfelt compassion and a heartfelt desire, she cried out to the Father and she said, I, wanted, I desire a child. And so God responds to her. And let's look at it in verse 1. And rejoice with singing. Hold on. Why are you telling this barren woman who can have no children to rejoice with singing? You barren one. He even calls her barren. You've never given birth. Burst into a song of joy. So he's told her a problem twice. She's barren and you've never given birth. Burst into a, a song of joy and shout, you who have never been in labor. There it says, he's just rubbing it in her face, isn't he? Huh? See, faith is not the absence of, of, of dealing with the facts. Faith looks at the facts in the face. And says, I'm going to do something about you. Amen. I'm going to do something about this. For the deserted wife. So here, now she has four issues. We'll have more children than the married one, says Yahweh. Now I want you to think about what he's saying to her. I want you to rejoice with singing. I want you to shout. I want you to... I want you to burst into song of joy. So notice how he's having her acknowledge him. What do we say that word acknowledge means? Acknowledge means to give power to. He says, give power to me over your circumstance. And and he said, now don't sing and fake it. Don't fake it till you make it. No, he said sing with joy. So there's emotional attachment here, right? There's an affection here. Her emotions, he's telling her, For her emotions to be engaged in this. He's literally saying to her, call things that be not as though as if they've already happened. Isn't that what he told Abraham? Our forefather of faith. That is his title. Amen. He said to Abraham that he would become the father of many nations. At a time when him and Sarah had been trying to have children all their lives. And now he's told them, 
at a certain point where Abraham's about 80 years old. And the Bible says in the fourth chapter of Romans that Abraham staggered not at the promises of God in unbelief. How do you stagger at the promises of God in unbelief? When you just don't believe. Then you stagger at those promises. Those promises that God gives you are just too good to be true. And so instead of moving and going forward into them, you step back and you... How is that? How, how can that be? See? He staggered not at the promise of God in unbelief, but stood strong, giving glory to God. This is exactly what this woman's going to do. She's going to stand strong, and she's going to give glory to God, and she's going to rejoice with singing, and she's going to burst in a song of joy, and she's going to shout. Somebody give the Lord a shout in this house today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Then he says, increase is coming. So I've stated the problem. I've told you how to respond to it by faith. And then he prophesies, increase is coming. So enlarge your tent and add extensions to your dwelling. Hold nothing back. In other words, when he said hold nothing back, he said make this home anything you want to make it. But whatever you do, when you build on to it, build it big enough. Amen. Make it as pretty as you want. Decorate it the way you want it. But just make sure you build it big enough. Because increase is coming. Hold nothing back. Make the tent ropes longer and the pegs stronger, for you will increase and spread out in every direction. Amen. 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 So did God have the manual for her miracle? And God has the manual for your miracle. Amen. 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 She, got the, she got her miracle. She got that child. Do you see that a prophecy introduces a potential miracle so that you can compare your current reality with what could be. He wants you to compare your current reality, which is why he said all the things he said to her. You are barren. Your husband has deserted you. You have never been in labor. You have never had a child. He's telling it like it is. And then he tells her, but I want you to respond this way. Don't you, don't you respond and react like a broken woman, like a, a divorced woman, like a woman whose husband's left, left you, like a woman who's never had a kid, like a woman who's not pregnant. Don't you act like it. Now, why is this important? Let's, let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go back. Yes, I will. He wants you to compare your current reality with what could be. This is what prophecy is all about. Take note of your current situation. Take note of the way it is right now. Be really, really honest with yourself. But when God prophesies, make the comparison. Now, when he tells you then, I want you to, like he told her, I want you to rejoice, I want you to shout, I want you to sing, I want you to do this with joy. What he was telling her is he's saying, now do this. And as you're moving forward, when you arrive, you're going to fit your future. Because the part you're doing in the prophecy is actually shaping and molding you. You're going to need to fit your future when you get there. So that's why he has you do your part in the prophecy. Because there's no sense you being like a piece of the puzzle, and you get to the end, and you're not the piece of the puzzle that fits in that space. You've got to fit your future. Amen. Well, we can just sit back and gripe, and we can fuss, and we can cuss, and we can curse, and we can spit, and we can talk negative, and just this is the way it is. Or we can take God's prophecy and compare our current reality to what it could be. And then do our part in what he told us to do. And as we move forward in it, when we get to our future, we'll fit it. We'll fit it. Amen. Did you get anything out of this this morning? I'm not done. But I'll take that. Amen. Hallelujah. See, God's power shows up in the places where we feel powerless. 
And that's the point. When you realize, oh, I could give you testimony. Many of you heard uh, several of my testimonies. But I give you testimony after testimony, event after event, encounter after encounter, time after time, situation after situation, circumstance after circumstance after circumstance, where um, <laughs> God's presence showed up and he produced a miracle. And because he produced that miracle in my personal life and in the lives of my parents, I have such a deep affection. I have a, such a deep emotion about God who would want to do that for me. I was in a place where I was powerless. I was unable to achieve anything or do anything or get success in my own ability. I had nothing going for me other than my relationship with God. That was it. That was it. I had no education. I had, I had, no, I had no, my family was in poverty. The, the, we, we had one path, and that one path was, it's God or nothing. Amen. Now, in some ways, I appreciate that because it, it, it kept me from being confused because, you know, I'm uber talented or, you know, I'm uber good looking or I'm, you know, or I'm, you know, Justin Bieber lookalike or whatever. <laughs> whatever that is that makes you think you're talented or gifted or, you know, I could use this skill or that part of my intellect or I could do this or that and it could make me successful too. I, I, no, I didn't have any of that. I had one path. It was God or nothing. I know what it's like to live in the barrio. I used to live in the barrio. My best friends were barrio people. Is that a thing? I don't even know. That's a true story. But the reality, God came in into my powerlessness. And he, he revealed his power to me. And there was, such a, there was such a distinction between the darkness that I was in. Even though I was a, even though I was a Christian, I was still all my environment and all the things around me was so dark. The school I went to was so dark. Life around me was so dark. Poverty, the po spirit of poverty was so powerful, tangible, that when I saw God, it was like, why wouldn't I want that? Why wouldn't I want that? He can lead me out of this. He can take me from that place of famine and destitute and poverty. Why not risk it? Amen. And so thank God my parents did. Thank God we did. Thank God we came out of it. Amen. They came out of it. My parents did when I was a teenager, finally. 17, 18 years old. They finally came out of it. And it just was like a, a launching pad to rocket me to go further and further away from that into the reality of God's blessings and His prosperity. But never, but never, but never letting God's blessings destroy me. How many times I've seen people experience God's blessings and it just destroy them? Someday I'll teach on that from Scripture. Amen. Let's, so we see the barren woman, Isaiah 54. Let's look at now in a, a second. This group of people, these are the sons of Ephraim. These sons of Ephraim, they're, they're, they're born it's in their DNA to be warriors. Their fathers were warriors. <laughs> their father's fathers were warriors. This is what they did. This is what they were born to do. They were notorious for their exploits on the battlefield. And it says in Psalms 97, <clears throat> or uh, 90, uh, 78. Take, for example, the sons of Ephraim. Though they were all equipped warriors, each with weapons, they were trained. When the battle began, they retreated and ran away in fear. They didn't really believe the promises of God. They refused to trust Him 
and move forward in faith. They forgot his wonderful works and the miracles of the past. So does that tell us that they and their family have experienced God's wonderful works? Does that tell us that they and their family have experienced powerful miracles? But they forgot. See, they forgot. Even their exodus from Egypt, the epic miracle of his might, and they forgot the glories of his power at the place of passing over, and the church has forgotten. Which is why they've walked away from signs, wonders, and miracles. Which is why they've walked away from healing. We have to get our healing through the doctor and through the medical system instead of getting our healing from God. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying we shouldn't abandon our heritage. The greatest thing that you'll ever experience in your life, and I would say this to any young person, I would say this especially not only in the physical realm, but I would say it especially in the spiritual realm. Don't abandon your spiritual inheritance. Why would you want to start over and not stand on the shoulders of those who went before you? That's what spiritual inheritance is. But we forget. This is why we forget miracles. Even though that book, we could easily call this book a book of miracles. It's documented, recorded. How many prophecies are in this book? How many miracles, signs, and wonders are in this book, recorded in this book? Why? So we wouldn't forget. And yet these sons of Ephraim forgot. Even though they were trained, even though they were uh, notorious for their exploits on the battlefield, just like their fathers and their father's fathers, they were too. And even though they saw God intervene when they would go to battle on their behalf. And, and so, but here they are, they forgot. They forgot. Amen. And they were afraid. And so when God said, charge, they retreated. And when God says, go forward, move forward. You know how many times I sit down with people, this is a true story, or I talk to people and I just go back and I remind them, yeah, but God, didn't he? Uh, didn't you tell me one time that God did this for you and God did that for you? So why are you wondering now if he can do it again? Amen. Well, if he did it for this person over here, he can do it for you and we'll do it for you. Amen. Amen. He's no respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. Signs and wonders, miracles, healings are for all of us. Yeah. Amen. This is why we have to track... The miracles. The same way, if we would track the miracles, the signs and wonders, the same way you keep your checkbook. And you keep up with your investments. You track your miracles that, that closely? Well, I don't have time to journal that. Well, you have time to get on your computer and work out your finances every month or every week. You're telling me your financial situation is more important than tracking God's power? Right. You need to do both is what I'm saying. Amen. <laughs> not just the one. Right. Well, you know, I, I just don't journal. I'm just not good at journaling. You're going to forget when you're on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. And he's going to say charge and you're going to retreat. Look at what it says in Deuteronomy. You shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God. Here's what I want you to see. You shall diligently keep his testimonies. Remember uh, several weeks ago we talked about how God has a testimony? Hmm? Keep his testimonies. Keep his testimonies. Keep his testimonies. He's never going to tell any, any one of us when you're in battle, run! Amen. You're outnumbered. You're going to get beat to a pulp. In a place where we have no trees, I say pulp. Okay. <laughs> Amen. 
He's never going to say that. He's going to say, go forward. Move forward into that. Amen. Now, I brought, uh, I, I recently, I, uh, <laughs> Pastor David, he, he taught last weekend, last Sunday. Would you give him a hand clap? <laughs> Pastor David, stand up. Dude, they love you already. It took them 21 years to love me. <laughs> Not comparing them, just messing with them. But because Pastor David was going to be preaching, um, I, uh, I had an opportunity because I take what I do seriously every Sunday, which is why I don't come up here with notes. I come up here, I'm called to the ministry of speaking out of the abundance of my heart. We're going to talk about that in the near future, probably in this series. Um, I was able to turn my, my, the, my focus away from, okay, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to preach this Sunday? Because that's, that's, a, that's typically a Sunday afternoon question. Okay, Holy Spirit, where are we going uh, in, next Sunday? Yeah. Next Sunday. And I get up on Monday morning, there I'm at. Okay, Holy Spirit, tell me, lead me. Where are we going? I don't go. <laughs> I don't get go and get a canned message. I don't go. I've never taught the same message from this platform in 21 years. Never. I just couldn't do it to you. No, truthfully, I couldn't do it to me. It's just not in me. It has to be fresh manna. It has to be right out of his mouth, fresh and new. And so, uh, because Pastor Dave was teaching, I was able to just turn. And I had an open-eye vision. It was one afternoon. I had an open-eye vision. And I was standing there, and I was standing like this close to whatever I was standing at. So I couldn't make out what I was actually seeing. And so the Holy Spirit was right here. I could see him in my peripheral vision. And he said, Scott, step back. <laughs> like, duh. Okay. So I stepped back, and he said, step back. And so I stepped back. And I went, oh. And what I was looking at was a blank canvas. It was bigger than this. As tall as this, all the way to the floor, and maybe half as wide as this. And he said, here. And in his hand were paintbrushes. And he said, paint. And all of a sudden... Those paintbrushes were not in my hand. They were coming out of my mouth. And in that, I began to paint four separate flows. And I would go over to this flow and paint. And I'd go, oh, oh. I was in wonder. I was like, what I was seeing. But no, more than that, what I was feeling. In the moment. And then I'd go, okay, okay, I'm going to go over here to this one. And I started over here. And then I'd step back. And I'd go, oh. And I would be in awe. And then I'd go, oh, oh, oh. And I just would struggle. Which flow am I going to go to next? Any of you getting this? And so finally, after about 30 minutes of that, sometimes I know Missy's wondering what I'm doing in my study. I look back, and I ask the Holy Spirit, what is this? And he disappeared. He'll be back. He'll be back. Because I saw things. I sensed things. I felt things I've never seen or heard before. Felt before. Amen. Amen. And it was in that that the Holy Spirit gave me these words. In fact, he gave me a series of three prophecies. Boom, 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 back to back to back. He said, you're in the beginning stages of a spiritual evolution. Revelation after revelation will sweep across this nation. I will move in the church then affect the world. Many of my people will come up into an upward swirl. And I, I remember when he said that I saw, how I many you saw that movie Twister? And they're hanging on. And they're looking up into that 
twister. That's what I saw. It will be on a scale like never seen before. And then he said, Scott, you've witnessed the Jesus movement, the word of faith movement, the charismatic move too. What will take place would be un- will be unveiled. Signs, wonders, miracles through great revelations will be experienced by many of you. Many will come aside and experience what's new. But there will be those who won't. They've got other things to do. But those who have my attention will not be disappointed. Epic things will occur because of the anointing. So rejoice, give praise, lift up a shout. These will be glory days. Amen. Amen. You know, when a prophetic word comes out of the kingdom of God, the kingdom dimension, it comes with a great anointing on it. Amen. And that anointing comes to, with purpose because that anointing is power. It doesn't come without being assigned to do something. Amen? There's an assignment of God's power on this church. And it's going to become more and more obvious of what it is. When God gives us a prophecy, it interrupts the enemy. Immediately, he speaks, and the enemy, he interrupts what the enemy is doing, and he interrupts what the enemy is saying. That prophecy literally binds up the enemy from continuing to do. It literally, literally puts, that, puts the enemy in a paralyzed position so he can no longer activate and move in what he was doing against you in your life. And then... The miracle comes. And then wonder is, is in the experience. You will, you will, you will go, well, what does wonder do? Wonder, wonder asks the question, how, how, what, what, what just happened? I don't understand that. I, I, I don't know how that it happened. I, I, don't, I can't really put words to it. Amen. Now, once you see this, the enemy wants you to think wonder can't happen. He wants you to think miracles can't happen. As we go forward in this series, We're going to break it down. We're going to talk about signs and the purpose for signs. We're going to continue to break. We're going to continue to talk about prophecy and the value of prophecy and why it's so important. That book is full of prophecy, and especially in the Old Testament where you didn't have a neighborhood church like you have today, okay, because you didn't have the Word of God. The leaders of the nation would go in search of the prophet. Many times God would put a prophet next to the king to give him instruction and guidance and direction, and that's why. Today we have the Word of God, but we also have the Holy Spirit. Amen? The Holy Spirit is the spirit of prophecy. And He's speaking. In this series, we're going to talk about uh, a, uh, a prophecy that Kenneth E. Hagin gave in 1963 that is playing out before our eyes and has been part of it has been playing out for the last 20 years but when I read it to you you will go oh my gosh we'll continue to reveal the prophecies that he gave me on that day and I'm believing that there's going to be More information that he's going to give us as we go forward in this series. Amen. Look at this next step. I expect an encounter with the realm of wonder. Say that with me. I expect an encounter with the realm of wonder. Go ahead and bow your head and close your eyes. You're here this morning. You would say... 
that you are on a negative slide in some area of your life. You're on a slide. Remember we said earlier, stop the slide before it stops you. It doesn't matter what area of your life it is, but you know, you know. And just as we've talked about it today, it's just floated to the surface and you now recognize it like you never have before. You have an awareness of it. Who's that in this house today? You're on a negative slide. Raise your hand. Let me get a good picture of you. Okay. Facebook audience, I thank you for being with us today. Because of what we're going to be doing uh, further in this service, we're going to go ahead and dismiss you. But thank you for being a part of Path Point Fellowship Church. This great divine relationship community is in love with you. We pray for you every week. Our leadership team does especially. And we just thank the Lord for you. We know that you're going to have a blessed week. And God's got great things in store for you. Hold on to the prophecy that was given today. Make sure that you don't have too much to do. That you, but that you come aside and watch what God can do for you. See you next time.